Which would be worse for you to endure? Number one, sleep only four hours a night every night. Number two, work out only two times a week. Or number three, only eat food available at the local house of pizza. So which of those three? <laughs> I love it. Which of those three would be worse for you? So you could, if you if you could pick one, definitely not to do. What would it be? Which one would it be? Um, we live in the you know if you go to the doctor um, and you're unhealthy, they say eat right and exercise more. So at first blush, coming from an exercise and a fitness and health guy, it seems like it'd be. Um, avoid the house of pizza and work out more than twice a week. But I would actually choose the um, sleeping four hours. What confidence is has nothing to do with winning or the leaderboard. What confidence is, is knowing that you giving your best efforts is enough. Today we are going to, we had an idea a few weeks ago to sort of do like a, like a desert island if you only had this, you're, you know, if you were stuck on an island, you could only do this. So we came up with it, or I came up with a handful of questions that are sort of like in if that you're, vein. If your house was burning down, you could yeah. only grab three exactly. things. What three things would you exactly. grab? So, but, but for fitness. But for fitness. Fitness yeah. and health. So uh, I think these, I think this will be interesting, but we may stray a little bit from that, um, that sort of format. But we'll, we'll go from there. Um, first question right off the bat is if you had to... Uh, limit or or reduce your sort of your fitness regime to one single movement, um, but still wanted to pursue a general overall health. I guess mm-hmm. what would that one movement look like, or what would it be, and then and then why? I actually remember why we 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 came across an article that somebody was talking about. What are that's the best right. movements? Yes, yeah. that's what started. Yes, the whole yes, thing. yes, yes, yes. I forgot okay. about that. Actually, I had, yeah, you're right because um, it was it was not an article. and I disagreed with it. Yeah, it was not an article you appreciated because they said walking. Yes. So here's my retort to that. Mm-hmm. I would not choose walking. I would choose something that. Um, so first off, you have to set up like the precedence of why the movements, right? And I think that they missed the beat on that a little bit. Walking is probably not bad. It is a functional movement. But if you're going to turn about functional, you need to define what that is. And functional means that it's essential. You have to, humans have to do it. If you lose the ability to do it, you end up in the nursing home. Mm -hmm. They are natural. We are born to do it. It's not something we invented. It's a part of our DNA. Just like a bird flaps its wings, a dog wags its tail. We squat, jump, lunge, throw, push, pull, et cetera. But probably the most defining characteristic of a functional movement is that they move a large load, large distance quickly. So they're unique in their ability to express power. How much weight are you moving? How far are you moving? How long did it take you to get there? For that reason, walking kind of goes out the window, right? You're not producing much power at all. You should be jogging. You should be running. You should be sprinting. Sprinting would be a better choice than jogging, which would be a better choice than walking. Mm -hmm but I would choose something else. I would choose, the movement I would choose would bring people through a much bigger range of motion. So articulating the joints through their full capacity, you're gonna bring the hips and the knees through a full range of motion, the shoulders and the major joints of the of the body through full range of motion while expressing um, the maximal power output you can, whether that's for one to three seconds, that anaerobic component, or a very long period of time in the aerobic component. You can have your choice either which one. And that would be a squat, clean, and jerk, press, overhead, whatever you want to call it, thruster. Mm-hmm. Um, but basically, for those that aren't following along with what that, a squat, clean, take a barbell off the ground or dumbbells or a sandbag, wherever you want, off the ground, bring it up to your shoulders while passing through a full deep squat, and then bring, stand it up, and then bring it all the way up and overhead. It's You see in the Olympics. Yep. It's these people that bring the bar from the ground to overhead in two movements. So maybe I'm cheating by... <laughs> combine two movements but it's but it's the yeah. clean and jerk is one movement yep. that that's there it has the benefits of so many different things if you think of the 10 components of fitness you know those being um, cardiovascular endurance strength stamina speed flexibility power actually agility balance and coordination they're basically all comprised inside of that movement you could be like well what about that first one you mentioned the 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 cardiovascular endurance that if you were to do pick a number, pick a time domain, you know, 50 clean and jerks at 95 pounds, or how many clean and jerks can you do in a 10 minute period? You would get the same aerobic benefit you would get from swimming, biking, jogging, running, pick one of those other 
traditional aerobic or monostructural components, you get the same heart effect. People confuse cardio with the fact that it has to be on a cardio machine. Mm -hmm. If your heartbeat is beating at 180 beats a minute for 20 minutes, it doesn't matter if you're in spin class or you're lifting weights. Your body cardiovascularly doesn't know the difference. So from this one movement, you get a lower body pull off the ground using your posterior chain, hamstrings, butt, low back, and all the backside muscles of particularly the midsection of the legs pulling off the ground. You get to all the benefits of a lower body push, the squatting, particularly a deep squat from below parallel when you're lifting the bar up from that squat position. You get an upper body pull when you're pulling the bar up onto your shoulders. So everything from your back, your shoulders, your biceps and everything else. And you get an upper body push also through your shoulders, chest, triceps when you put the bar overhead. Also moving that load from the ground to overhead is an incredible distance the bar is traveling at relatively heavy weights, relatively quickly expressing incredible amounts of power. It's got to be the only other one I would argue is maybe a better movement. It would be the snatch. And that's because it involves a little bit more of the um, power component. It's a faster lift and a little bit more of the neurological component of the um, accuracy, balance, coordination, agility, and so on. But I believe that the clean and jerk, because you can lift so much greater weights and you're not limited by other things, um, I believe it is kind of the, the king of all movements. Mm -hmm. What if I had to limit the, the question to body weight? What would it, what would your answer be to that? Um, a a a I'm gonna cheat it again. Okay. <laughs> a burpee muscle up. So you're gonna drop okay. down to the yep. ground. <laughs> same thing. So yeah. you, all the same things have to apply, right? Yep. So mm -hmm. you take those components I talked about: natural, um, essential. There. So um, full range of motion, using all the the muscles in all of their capacities, M multi joints. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, so a burpee. So you drop into the ground. You're pushing off the ground with your upper body. Um, you, then you are then jumping up and uh, through a squat and jumping up onto something, then pulling yourself again. Now you have the upper body pull and the upper body push. So whenever you're trying to do these things, the first thing you would start with kind of is like, are you using a lot of muscles in the body and are you using them in multifaceted pushing and pulling both in the upper and lower body? But I particularly like the... Um, when the weights get away yeah. from the body. So in the when the weight is not just on, you know, generally your center of mass is somewhere around your belly button, mm -hmm. your navel. If as you move that far, the center of mass farther and farther away, the um the taxing or the uh, emphasis or the um the demand on your midsection, midline, core, what everyone talks about, goes up and up and up. So when you get that bar overhead, the core, the midline on the demand on your midline is a lot more than if the bar was on your shoulders, much more so than if it was at your waist. Mm -hmm. So that's why I like getting the bar overhead as well. Love it. Okay. Um, similar vein, but if you had to limit, um, uh, you know, uh, your training to let's say three CrossFit benchmark workouts in, a, uh, hmm. you know, in a week. So yep. say you've got, you know, you work out three times a week and you only do these three benchmark workouts again with the idea of still trying to pursue um, uh, overall health, you know, and, and fitness. Yep. What are the, what are the CrossFit benchmarks that you feel like if you were to only do these two or three, you would still be getting a, a maximum benefit? Great. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to work out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, sure. forever, only repeating three CrossFit workouts. Yes. So this has to be, um, exhaustive, inclusive, but broad in general. So we got to involve all the muscles. We got to involve all the modalities, meaning uh, gymnastics, weightlifting, and monostructural, you know, traditional cardio. Uh, we have to be putting, you have to be pushing and pulling and using our midsection and using our lower body and upper body. Um, to do that, uh, uh, let's uh, in CrossFit benchmarks. So what I'm going to limit it to is not hero workouts. That might be a cop out because they're so big and nasty. And you right. know, so traditional Girl girls. workouts, the girls. Um, let's start with Nancy. Nancy is a couplet combining um, kind of lightish um, overhead squats. They're prescribed at 95 pounds for guys and 65 pounds for girls and running. The workout is um, 400 meter run, 15 overhead squats, 95, 65 uh, for five rounds. It takes people about somewhere in that 12 to 16 minute range. Um, but again, the overhead squat, really kind of one of the king of all movements. Your, the demand on your flexibility, um, 
Combine that with running, which if you're gonna choose a monostructural, it has to be that over running, biking or rowing or skiing or something like that. Um, because you're getting your point, you're, you, in terms of functionality, getting you from point A to point B is pretty darn important, yeah. right? Um, if you lose the capacity to do that, you have, you've lost a lot of capacity. So I really like that as a starting point. Let's do Nancy on day one. Um, so that's Monday. On um, Wednesday, we'll do Linda. And Linda being 10, the rep scheme goes 10, 9, 8, all the way down to one of um, deadlift, bench press, and squat cleans. And the dead, it's all fairly heavy. It's based off of your body weight. The deadlifts is one and a half times your body weight. The bench press is at your body weight and the squat cleans are three quarters your body weight. Now we have a little bit more of a grind for most people. So it's not this pure like metabolic punch in the face that you get from Nancy. Um, but you get, again, like all of these pulling off the ground, pushing with your upper body, pulling with your upper and lower body. I threw a squat clean in there. We just talked about the benefits of the squat clean. Uh, but it's completely all loaded. And I really like the fact that it's, um, you get this neurological, um, this neuroendocrine response, meaning like lifting weights with high heart rate. That's incredible for things like growth hormone. And, you know, it's not just, we're not just deadlifting. We're not just squatting. We're getting um, you to lift heavy under metabolic duress, much more functional in terms of real world. Usually when you have to use your strength, it involves some sort of an elevated heart rate as well. It's not just, you know, help help me move my couch, you know, lift up the car for me, that type of thing. It might be type of thing like rescue someone from a burning building, climbing stairs in a fight or, you know, something of the sort. So the, uh, just a funny aside that I'm sure you don't remember, but I think the first time I met you and Heather was at CrossFit Boston, like yes. in 2007, doing 2008, Linda. doing that workout. And the thing I remember is I was still pretty new and it was definitely the first time I'd done this workout and we had just done it and then you guys came and then you guys did it like 700 times faster than I had done it. And I didn't even think that it was supposed to also be done quickly. So, so the and first I time like, I did it, this is it's awesome. Yeah, you, you, like you see it. Yeah. The first time I did it, I was new to CrossFit. It was one of the first workouts I did probably in the first six months. It popped up on main site. And I was like, oh, this is a good strength day. Yeah. And I started going through it. And it says for time, but even still, like you look at it and you're like, Cause it's, I fell into the trap of like, there's no running, there's no biking, mm -hmm. there's no like burpees, like how, and I did it in sweatpants and a sweatshirt thinking that I wouldn't, or maybe even worse, maybe I did it in like, in my like regular clothes. I think <laughs> I wasn't gonna like, I wasn't gonna sweat. And yeah. by like the eights, I was like Dumb. wrecked and yeah. drenched yep. and it's, it's gnarly. We used to do that workout every single New Year's day. Oh really? That used to be our New Year's day, yeah, our New Year's day workout. Was, yep. The gym would be closed and we would come in and, um, it's a great workout. It's a great workout. Yeah. Okay, so we got two. What's the, what will be the third? What will be third, Friday? So the th Friday would be the opposite. It would be total body weight. And it would be Barbara. Uh, okay. So Barbara being um, 20 pull-ups, 30 push-ups, um, um, yeah, Barbara, fight on bad. I, I'm, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm kind of, let's go with Barbara. Okay. Um, 20, uh, um, 20 pull-ups, 20 push-ups, I'm sorry, 20 pull-ups, 30 push-ups, 40 um, uh, sit-ups, and 50 squats. You take a three-minute break after you do that, and you repeat that five times. So now we have an interval play at play. So now you're going to work really hard just with your body weight, really fast repetitions, which we haven't had yet, cycle time, no external loading, but we still have the upper body push, pull, midline, all the rest. Um, but now we also have in a work rest environment, we're going to work really hard, depending on how fit you are for somewhere around, you know, just under three minutes to just over five minutes, rest again, then go again, rest again, then go again. So kind of three different time domains, three different stimuluses in terms of, uh, the demand on the body. Um, but always involving, you know, that kind of squat and pushing and pulling mm -hmm. and all the rest. So there's, there isn't, uh, of those three, none of them are particularly the, the Fran, um, levels of whether intensity, but, or even just time domains, no, nothing is solely like, here's a four to five minute workout. So the reason I, d uh, well in Barbara, Barbara you have, is, you, but, have but you have four minutes yeah. and your rest three minutes. Yeah. So it's almost a one-to-one -one work rest ratio. Mm -hmm. Um, but is there something in the, 
um, two to three minutes and done? No, because we're going to do these things forever. Mm -hmm. I love that and I like it a lot, but to have it as be one of our three that we're going to do forever, um, I don't think, I think you get uh, to get the stimulus you want out of it. Uh, you have to work incredibly hard um, to do that once a week, the same workout once a week. I think that you find your, uh, you come up to your potential really quickly gotcha. and you reach your physical and like you're bumping up against the edge of your potential really fast. Mm -hmm. So the ones I gave there, regardless if you're a games athlete or you're a newbie, you're going to see gains for a very, very, very long time. Whereas if you're a games athlete, you're doing Fran every yeah. Friday, like you're, so you get down to like the 215 Fran and what's the next week? Maybe 212. What's the next week? Yeah. Maybe 222. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. I don't, I just, I want to, I want to set ourselves up for a low trajectory towards a distant horizon of gains. Got it. Cool. All right. Next question is a fun one. Um, so I'm just going to read it so I don't mess it up, but which would be worse for you to endure? Number one, sleep only four hours a night, every night. Number two, work out only two times a week. Or number three, only eat food available at the local house of pizza. So which of those three? <laughs> I love it. Which of those three would be worse for you? So you could, if you if you could pick one, definitely not to do. What would it be? Which one would it be? Um, we live in the you know if you go to the doctor um, and you're unhealthy, they say eat right and exercise more. So at first blush, coming from an exercise and a fitness and health guy, it seems like it'd be. Um, avoid the house of pizza or work out more than twice a week. But I would actually choose the um, sleeping four hours. If there's the worst one for you, I forget how you yeah. worded it. The worst one for you of the three, working out twice a week, um, only you know, eating what's available at house of pizza or only sleeping four hours a week, it would be the sleep one. Yeah. We've referenced the study, I think it was done at Stanford where they took healthy college age males. They had them sleep for only four hours a night. And by night, seven, they were all pre-diabetic. Mm -hmm. They allowed them to sleep, their normal sleep schedule, and within two days, they have been able to reverse their becoming pre-diabetic. If you just eat crappy for a week, you don't become pre-diabetic. Similarly, like if you only work out twice a week, you're probably doing better than most of the people as right. it is anyway, right. and you don't become pre-diabetic. That's the one that's gonna lead you to decrepitude the fastest, shockingly enough. So why would it not be the house of pizza one? they offer every house of pizza offers a salad you get a salad with grilled chicken and that's really some olive oil and vinegar you're like, you, you'll be okay you're not you're doing okay yeah. for real like you're doing okay is it optimal for sure not only working out twice a week depending on what else you do for a living in your lifestyle um you know if you're a bricklayer and you're if, if you're a professional athlete and you're only working out twice a week on top of that like dude you're killing it right. you know if you are an office worker or you are a an author and you are only working out twice a week, we would like you to move more than that. But I'd much rather have you get you know, more sleep than four hours a night than get that additional third day of working out a, a week. Got it. Cool. Um yeah, that sleep study is crazy. It's and, and sleep is the more and more uh, you know, when you think about it in terms of like what could you go longer without? Like you're, let's say you go on vacation, you eat crappy, like by day 10, you feel crappy, right? Let's say you, oh, while you're on vacation, you also, um, you, a, a separate vacation, you eat well, but you don't work out. You're feeling kind of sluggish, but you're okay. Let's say you, you vacation or not, whatever it is, you're only sleeping three hours a night. Like, dude, you you can't drive. You can't operate machinery. You are essentially operating at a fraction of what you're, you're drunk, mm -hmm. you're on drugs, like you're not normal, like you can't function. Yeah. Um, okay. You're stuck somewhere with no fitness equipment. Mm -hmm. What does a, uh, you know, say we're on vacation and your hotel doesn't have a, a decent gym, which a lot don't. What is a, what is one or two maybe good body weight only workouts that you would that maybe either are a go-to for you or that you would recommend somebody uh somebody doing in that situation okay i'll give um i'll give two here i'll give one of my go-to's mm -hmm. which is like i you know really short on time um no equipment available whatsoever um and need to like hammer something and that is um some sort of variation of rep schemes of um 
10 burpees and 20 split lunge jumps where you get yourself in a lunge position, jump up in the air and switch the other foot forward and so on. So you do 10 burpees, get up, and then every time you jump and switch in the air, it's one, two, three, four. Do that for five, six, seven, eight rounds. I'm telling you, I got you. it's gonna get you. You're, you're, everything's gonna go. If you wanna get more of a, a, a pump, instead of a, a breather, switch out the burpees for push-ups mm -hmm. and do um, something like uh, 10 push-ups um, 20 lunge jumps, five, six, seven, eight rounds. I'm telling you, within four to six minutes, your workout is over. Like you're done. You got a really big pump. You can do this in your hotel room. You don't need anything. Yeah. If you have a little more of, let's say you have a pull-up bar. If you have a pull-up bar and maybe a place to run, maybe you're at a park, right? So that type of thing. I would do some sort of variation of Barbara, which I already listed as one of the great body weight workouts because it's got an upper body pull. It, you know, and pull-ups, it's got the everybody push and push-ups. It has everything that we love about squats, you know, with a total demand on the entire lower body. Um, it has sit-ups for the midline, but I might change out the rest for like a two, three, 400 meter run. Mm. So now you're getting that domain as well. Or maybe we should shorten the reps up. So maybe it's 10 pull-ups, 15 um, push-ups, uh, 20 sit-ups, 25 squats, three 200 400 meter run repeat for five rounds i just like the total body everything type thing um and mixing in the run kind of keeps it going for you know that 10 12 minutes um particularly like on vacation i kind of like slower wow. grindier longer things than kind of like the super short yeah. high intensity thing of barbara like barbara you got to kind of i've i've only thought i've only been like close to blackout and close to puking um, probably two or three times working out in my life, and one of them was after Barbara. Hmm. Yeah, it's gnarly. Yeah. If you can, if you can do the pull-ups and get close to doing the push-up straight, it is a gnarly. It's basically doing five frans. You are at if you can do the pull-ups and the push-up straight, which it takes a certain high level of fitness to do that. Every single round, you're trying to get under three minutes, and that is gnarly. Five, so you are at that fran kind of intensity yeah. level. Most of us are. You know, breaking up the pull-ups once or twice when you're in the later rounds and the push-ups become three or four breaks and it's a little bit different of a workout, but yeah. still phenomenal. Yeah. Okay. Switching gears just a little bit to nutrition. Um, if you had to, <laughs> I, I laugh because you're you're probably as close to this as most people, as, as anybody is, but if you had to limit your, um, your sort of your food intake to one meal, every meal, always again with the, with the intent of staying healthy, mm -hmm. What would that meal be and why do you choose those, you know, that to, to sort of continue pursuing health? So two quick um, asterisks or two quick kind of like points before this. Um, the first is this is for health and not like food I would enjoy for the rest of my life. Right. Having, or, or listeners think about this, like that's kind of the thought behind yeah. this. Having said that, the meal I'm going to say is the meal I, I, I this is the meal I have a lot. Um, but the second part of that is, um, nutrient diversity is humongous. It's probably one of the most overlooked things there is in the, the nutrition world or advice people, people give. Varying what you eat is incredibly important. And when people go on macros or zone, it's one of the real negatives. They find what works for them and they just kind of like plug and play and that's the meal that they do forever. So try and vary it as much as you possibly can. Having said that, if we were forced to like desert island type thing, have yep. one meal for the rest of our lives, it's the meal that I do some variation of probably 10 to 12 meals a week for real. It's like, this is what I, um, I, it's a salad that I just have big giant salads a lot. And the base of the salad is a mix of kale, arugula, and watercress, which um, probably are things that people, people probably usually go for some sort of lettuce mix. Those three are really powerful combination um, and individually by themselves are really powerful. Um, Watercress is kind of like, a, they look like little big sprouts, but flower, like a leaf, green leafy, hard to explain, but they're really kind of bitter and um, actually kind of taste like almost horseradishy. They're spicy. Okay. Yep. Um, um, arugula is kind of, it's kind of like an exaggerated arugula. If you ever had arugula by itself, it's kind of spicy and um, yep. horseradishy. But those three, um, then I would uh, go with um, Pacific wild caught salmon. 
Big difference than farm raised, and for those that are being tricked forever, um, Atlantic salmon is the same thing as farm raised. Hmm. Um, I didn't know that. <laughs> um, marketing doing yeah. a good job. <laughs> um, so Pacific wild caught salmon, very different, and I would definitely go for that. If you could do perfect world, it's caught on a fishing rod, not in a net, so the the, the fish doesn't have to struggle for you know a long time inside the net and be smushed and crushed. It gets reeled in and put on ice. Um, from there, it's a, 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 a um, the seasoning would be garlic. Garlic is an incredible superfood for most people. And then um, maybe some black pepper and then um, an array of vegetables. Like what can you get for veggies? Maybe put some like uh, roasted sweet potatoes on there to bring the carb content up a little bit. And then, you know, like the peppers, tomatoes, carrots, cucumbers, um, whatever else you want to do. And that's where I would vary it up a yep. little bit if there's going to be some variance. Um, and then a healthy um, fat-based um, salad dressing, like with avocado, like an avocado ranch without canola oil, um, olive oil or coconut oil based. Um, if you don't have that, if it's going to be olive oil and vinegar and some mustard based type thing, then probably add avocado on it as, as well. Like it. That actually sounds good. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, maybe it's, it's literally, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. Yeah. It's the meal I have um, for breakfast and lunch, probably five to six days a week, if not every every day every night mm -hmm. um i might switch out chicken for the salmon um and i might uh vary like the avocado to the salad dressing and i might vary out the veggies here or there um, but it is really the base of what i eat out of curiosity is that just so that you don't have to think about most of your meals is it is it a i love it, it i enjoy it thing? Okay. it's it's a it's a i believe I feel like I found uh, some superfoods for myself. We can do a whole thing on superfoods later on in a different podcast, but some foods that really benefit me from a health perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and I found how to combine them in a way. I'm a guy that um, some people like don't like chewing. I'm a guy that I like to eat. So I found a way that I can eat until I am full and I can just eat a ton at a sitting. Um, so I literally, I get a huge mixing bowl and make a salad in a big mixing bowl of this. It's If you were to go to like a family dinner, it's the salad that would be at the family dinner is what I'm eating Just for, you. for myself. <laughs> um, you know, the, the piece of salmon is a six ounce piece of salmon um, and the avocado. So the protein, the fat are kind of, um, I'm not gonna say weighed and measured, but I'm really, really ultimately aware. So it is um, a quarter to a half, depending on what else I'm doing for a salad dressing, a quarter to a half of an avocado. Um, a six ounce piece of salmon. And then um, it is a huge bed of that mix of greens, unlimited other veggies, and then a small serving, a handful of uh, sweet potatoes if I'm adding those on. Okay, cool. All right, last question. Um, if you had the ability uh, and the opportunity to pick two people, past, present, um, to sort of sit down at, at dinner, sit down around a table, um, uh, to learn as much as possible from, you know, to, to sort of instigate a conversation. Who are those two people who you would choose uh, hmm. in order to learn uh, what you deem would be, uh, you know, as, as much as, as two people could teach you in a, in a, you know, in a conversation? Okay. I'm not religious, mm -hmm. but the first one would be Jesus, mm -hmm. <laughs> the son of God. I feel I could tell us what we wanted to, right? Yeah. yeah. So maybe that's a cop-out answer, but he is a historical <laughs> no, you, figure. It's your, it's you, you get the answer. So I feel like he could tell us yep. a lot. <laughs> yep. Agreed. Um, so that might be my, my first choice and potentially a cop-out answer. The other ones that popped to mind are the people like Aristotle or Socrates. And I feel like they were way above their time. You know, they're the ones that said, they, you know, the doctors of the future will prescribe um, uh, food, not medicine. Like maybe that might be a powerful person, but um, honestly, and this is the honest to God's real answer. And it's my, it might be my first choice above those other other ones, which is kind of crazy, would be Greg Glassman. Mm. Um, I believe, um, maybe this is, is going to sound me being very, you know, disciple-y of the CrossFit methodology, but so be it. Like, I believe um, the man's a genius. 
He's created a fitness and health revolution, and I don't use that word lightly at all. If you go back just 15 years and go into a gym, you never go to a sports training facility, go anywhere. It was the sea of machines. And it was, and if it wasn't the sea of machines, it was bodybuilders doing slow concentric reps, you know, for um, physique purposes. And people were going to the gym and not getting healthy. (laughs) They might be improving their physiques, but, you know, the things we take for granted now of combining weightlifting and running together in one workout didn't exist. And it was segmented training for segmented capacities. Well, he is equally, and the more I learn about nutrition and health in general, he's equally as forward thinking in those categories as he was in terms of developing physical dominance. You know, he's now creating physical competence, you know, through people that need to lose hundreds of pounds and get off medications and how to treat people from, prevent people from going into the hospitals. And once they're in the hospitals, how to help them besides medication, you know, I believe he is um, exactly what we needed at this time. We've created a really big mess for ourselves through processed foods and what the medical community do. I should, I should preface everything. Um, through some of the practices in the medical community and the, some insurance and what people are incentivized to run their practices. Um, through what he's now created in terms of CrossFit health. You know, there's CrossFit, then there's the CrossFit games, then there's CrossFit health. And what he's doing with the CrossFit health side of things is um, going to be equally disruptive to the health industry as CrossFit was to the fitness industry. Um, I believe that every time I've ever sat down with Greg, um, it's just this like incredible wealth of knowledge that just like waterfalls down on top of you. Um, And I believe that every time you talk to him, you're just getting like these little snippets of what actually is there. You know, I've I've strayed away from like certain things, you know, it's kind of like, I'm, I figured out I'm smart. And the more I learn, the more I keep coming back to like Mm -hmm. the simplicity of eat meat, vegetables, nuts, seeds, little starch, no sugar, keep intake levels to that, which support exercise, not body fat, practice the major lifts, you know, keep exercises short and intense and as varied as possible. It's like he, he's got this incredible ability to see what we 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 have a hard time seeing because we get confused with everything and condensing it down to this really simplistic messaging. Mm. I think it's a good place to end. That was fun. Cool. Thanks. That was great. All right.